Hey, it's Rainiacs, Mel the Terrain Shooter, back in the studio and back with another Let's Make for you. And in this Let's Make, we're continuing with our sort of countrywide scenics and we're doing working on wooden fencing. Yeah, it's that extra little thing to add a little more detail to your battlefields. So, with that in mind, I'm going to show you a few easy ways of doing some simple fencing, gates, styes, all those sort of things. Yeah, so, let's head over to the bench, eh? Come on! Right, before we get stuck in, there's quite a lot of different styles of wooden fencing over, over the ages, you know. And it changes from different ages, different times, different locations and the materials. But what we're going to be looking at in this video is sort of Northern European sort of field fencing. Well, now, whether that's industrially made stuff or whether it's the old rustic stuff. So what we'll do is we'll do an industrial made one and then we'll do a more rustic one. And, you know, you can take away from the techniques from that, whatever you want, and make whatever style fences you want. So let's start off and we'll do the easy one first which is sort of the manufactured one. Okay now for the manufactured one we're going to use, well for all our wooden fences we're essentially going to use wood. Yeah and in this case what I've gone for coffee stirrers for the main planking. Okay and then I've got a thick dowel here. Yeah and this is a thick barbecue skewer. Yeah, and I'll use that for the fence post. Now, when it comes to your fence posts, yeah, there's a couple of options. For the rustic stuff, you can go for things like twigs. Yeah, you can go for barbecue skewers. You can go for uh, toothpicks. These are more suited to 15 mil. Per personally, I prefer, you know, uh, what you call it, barbecue skewers. Now, it is really easy to do this because all we're going to do is lay these out, yeah, glue these on, yeah, and then glue them onto our, our base ready to go. And that is pretty much it with these. But the first thing I've got to do is cut these down to the right sort of size. And I want them to be roughly the same length, length, length of my base. So, yeah, I'm going to lay that down, get my clippers. Let's clip one end off. Whoa, that was fast. Yeah just to straighten the edge up and then what I'm going to do is do the same there yeah so I'll do that back in a sec right our strips are cut yeah and it's time to what you call it to sort of start putting it together now dead simply we need to cut our, our, our sort of fence pace poles should I say now a fence will typically just come up under your breastbone yeah uh, anywhere around breastbone to sort of wait, waist for it a fence so we're looking at roughly that high yeah so I'm gonna get my clippers I'm gonna cut us a couple of these out yeah at that height so we can sort of you know glue them down right I'll crack on with that now okay so we've cut out our little pieces there we've got our what you call it our planks and then all we're gonna do is glue the planks onto our, our pieces now I've lined them up against the edge of my base so I know roughly where they're gonna go and they're all the same sort of position now when it comes to glues, you can use stuff like PVA and that sort of stuff, but for this sort of job, because it's so fiddly and because I want them to dry relatively quickly, I'm using gel super glue when it comes out. Yeah, I'm going to have to hold that because it's gel. And I'm just going to put a couple of blobs of gel on here. Yeah. Oh, don't glue to the table. One there. Sorry if you're struggling to see this one. Yeah. And then we're ready to glue on our first bit. Which is that. Ah, oh, you git. Right, I'm going to glue this onto here. Save me fiddling around and messing it up alive on YouTube. Catch you later. Right guys, there we are. After a little bit of fiddling around. Yeah. We glued those on and you can see it's dead simple. Next thing we need to do is simply glue it onto there. Okay. Now typically fences they have what you call it typically three sort of sort of uh, crossbars. But in this case we're going nice and simple and we're only using two because we only really need to use two. Uh, which way, which way? That way? Yeah, let's do it that way. Right, bit of glue on the bottom, yeah, and then we'll just stick it down, yeah? Right, now I'm sticking this down onto a piece of EPVC. Now there's lots of things you can use for bases for fences. You can get away with lollipop sticks, tongue depressors, which are fat lollipop sticks, 
bits of plastic hard but I've become a real fan of the old EPVC recently and you know I don't want to handle it too much because I don't want it to fall over but they are yeah really really simple fencing now this is the industrial fencing which is designed to look very standardized if you're knocking a load of them out this is the way I'd go you know so if you've got to do six foot fencing go with this way what we're going to do now is we're going to put this to one side we're going to get our other raw materials and I'm going to take you through some various weathering techniques and shaping techniques to make something a little bit more special eh? a little bit more rustic shall we say so I'm going to put this one side I'll get these and we'll crack on shortly Okay guys, we've covered the really, really simple, you know, industrially made fencing and I've told you how you can knock those out. Now we're going to step it up. We're going to do something a little bit more rustic. We're going to throw a few more techniques in. And for this I'm using balsa wood. Now I've got some twigs here. You could use twigs like these for making fences and that sort of stuff. But that's more... It's okay. You can do it for, what do you call it, for sort of late European, sort of like, you know, around about World War One, World War Two sort of time. Yeah, they work well for dark age stuff, but we're going to be covering sort of dark age waddle fences and all that sort of stuff in a future video. I want to concentrate on sort of Northern European sort of World War II-y time right there now. So, we're going to do these. So, with the material that we're using, I'm going for balsa wood. Yeah, available from most hobby shops. Now, it's made, and I've pre-cut these ready. It's made and it's quite smooth, as you can see. Yeah, come on. Yeah, and it doesn't really have the detail of wood, you know, it is wood, yeah, it's actually a, I think it's a grass actually, but anyway, yeah, what I've got here is, I've got a metal wire brush that's used for cleaning the barbecue, and all I'm going to do is scrape it along it, one way, then the other. If I bring those back up again now. Yeah, that focus, when they focus, there you are. You can see that's put a grain into that now that we'll be able to capture and that will take paint and washes and all that stuff and be much more realistic, okay? So, yeah, next job, very quickly, I've got to just mark these up and at the same time, yeah, actually I'm not going to mark these up just yet because what I'm going to do is with this bit, this is what we're going to use for our uprights. Now, it's very square at the moment and I want to sort of you know, just take the edges off it. So, a little bit of, of sandpaper, and I'm just going to rub just the top, take the, the sort of, the sharp edges off it. Yeah, and make it look a little bit more worn and rustic. Yeah, we don't need that much of it done. Next job, like I said, is we've got to, I've got to texture these with this. I'm all over the place today, guys, aren't I? Right, so I'll texture these with these, and we'll come back once that's done. Okay guys, we've cut out our fence stakes, we've textured them all up, we've textured our wood up now and it's got a nice grain. The last thing I want to do is just sort of come along and just take little chunks out of it with a blade. Okay, and this is just going to make it look like it's not manufactured. Okay, like it's actually been woodworked, you know, like before they would have done before fencing was made in factories. And, uh, you know, so I'm just going to literally just... Take little slivers off, just like that. And then once we've done that, we'll be ready to do the gluing. So I'll crack on with this, and I'll come back shortly. Okay, guys, everything's cut and shaped, and we're ready to go. And we're just going to glue them, just like we did with these. So we'll be using super glue, and this is a gel one. You can use a watery one, and obviously the PVA and various other, other glues you can use. Now, very quickly, before I do, I want to show you the difference. Now, we started off with a piece like that. Yeah, and we've ended up with a piece like that, right, which is far more realistic, yeah? And far more realistic than using our skewers. You can see the difference there. We've got the wood texture. It's got an irregular shape to it. In fact, that's quite nice. It shows it quite well, doesn't it? Yeah, the difference? There you go. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm very quickly going to simply put my blobs of glue onto here, yeah, lay these down, yeah, and then we're going to glue it onto here, okay? Now, you may say, but Mel, they're too short. I know. I decided to do something a little different. You'll see as I go. Okay, guys, that's all dried up now. I've put a little bit of my gel super glue at the bottom, and we're going to super glue it down onto this base. So, coming in very carefully. I want to make sure I get it in just the right spot. 
make it stand up straight, and we're on a winner. So there we are. Yeah. Now, just while that very quickly dries, I've also cut, yeah, just another little plank. Yeah, textured it. Two little support stops. Higher than my first run. Yeah, a little bit of glue on top of these. And then very carefully, without knocking over the original fence, we'll see if we measured this up right, yeah? I'm going to come in. I'm going to drop that there. Now, typically, yeah, fences sort of have three panels, yeah, but when you do wargaming stuff, if you do that, the chances are it's going to end up looking quite fiddly, yeah, with them being lots of thin little bits, they tend to get broken, so stick with the two, you know what I mean? Yeah, but they are. That's a nice little lovely site. It makes it a feature piece, and you can make gates and all these sort of things like this. Now, the next job we need to do is to get these textured up, and for that, I'm going to be pva in them and then gritting them, and then we're going to watch clip. We're going to paint them up. So, I'll get my PVA and grit together, and then we'll come back and get these gritted up. Okay, guys, gritting time. Now, I've given this a quick coat of PVA with just a dash of water just to make it a bit easier to put on. I've got a bit of newspaper down, and all I'm going to do is sprinkle over yeah so like that spin it over to the other side I'm bound to have missed spots don't worry we've got to flop this anyway so you know it will be perfectly fine and if I do that and I bring that up start you can see where I missed it right underneath don't worry we'll get flock on that but it's looking rather nice isn't it Right, I'll get this one done and then we'll leave them to dry and I'll bring them back when they're dry, ready for base coating and start painting. So, I'll get this on, I'll crack on guys. Okay guys, our grit is pretty much dry now as you can see and they're looking beautiful. Okay, there's this couple of scraggly hairs, they'll clean up once we start putting a bit of watch it paint on them. Yeah, next thing we need to do is seal the bases. Now, you can seal them with a little bit of watered down PVA, but I'm doing a double tap. What I'm going to do is a bit of brown paint, yeah, and this is just bog standard house paint that's been watered down a little to make it e a little bit easier to use, yeah, specifically so I can put it through an airbrush, but we're brushing it on now. Yeah, and then what I'm going to do is, we're probably going to need a bit more than that actually. The next job, PVA. Yeah, just a little, don't need much. Yeah, we're going to give it a stir, and then we're just going to layer it on. Yeah, so if we get our pieces. Now remember, because this isn't sealed, yeah, when the, when the grit gets wet, it'll become loose again. Yeah, so don't go back over areas you've already done. Yeah, otherwise you'll have a bad time. Yeah, now all I'm going to do is, I'm very quickly just going to work along here, base coat these up, and then we'll come back when they're dry to actually paint them up, guys. Right, I'll crack on. Right, guys, there's our really simple fence, okay? And as you can see, I, I've gritted it, I've given it a base coat of brown, and I've given the watch of fence a base coat of brown as well, and I've used this house paint for that job. Okay, a little bit of watered down house paint. Yeah, any dark brown would do. At the end of the day, wood comes in many different shades, you know, so you can literally play with all sorts of different colours. It's down to your personal preference. I like them dark, okay. Obviously, we want to highlight this up a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a bit of a dry brush. Now, I could dry brush it with a light shade of brown. Yeah, I could go with a cream and give it quite a harsh dry brush. Yeah, I'm actually going for this sort of desaturated brown, it's like a pastel brown. Okay, I put some in my palette over here. Yeah, that's it. And all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use this rough brush to give it a bit of a rough dry brush. Yeah, I'll probably need more out. Yeah, so, take off the excess on, the, on a piece of cardboard because cardboard soaks up the moisture from the paint better than anything else. And this is far, probably far more overbrushing than anything else. Then come along, yeah, and just give it a bit of an overbrush. Yeah, so if I bring that up, yeah, see what I'm doing with it there? Right, guys, all I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on, yeah, do the rest of this, 
and I'll come back once I've done it, yeah? There we go, guys. See? Nice and simple. Now, I'm just going to touch up just a little. What I've done, yeah, is I've thrown a little bit of cream onto my palette with that brown. Yeah, and I'm just going to mix them up a little. Yeah, just a little. And just make a lighter tone. It's always better to highlight with a cream rather than a watch coat of white. If you go with white, you get a really chalky looking sort of colour. So always go with like your cream. Yeah, and then all I'm going to do is dead simple. And yeah, just a couple of little highlights just across the top. Yeah, now the trick is not to apply these uniformly. Yeah, but to, to sort of apply them just in odd spots. Yeah, and what that does is it, it makes it look a little bit more realistic. So if I show you that side, yeah, and then with that slightly highlighted bit, easy peasy, eh? Yeah, so I'll just do the back because, you know, we really should. Right, that's basically dry brushing this up. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flock these up, but can't do that till we do the more advanced fence. So I'll finish this and I'll skip to the advanced fence, eh? Okay then, I've base coated, ah, what you call it, more fancy fence. I'm more fancy field fence. Okay, but now it comes to time to washing it. Yeah, and I say washing it, and that's because unlike the other fence, yeah, I'm not going to paint this. I'm actually going to do it in washes. So I'm going to start off with my typical dark brown. Yeah, so we're going to put a bit of that in the palette. Yeah, we're going to put a little bit of water in there. Some high quality H2O. Yeah, get ourselves a brush. And sort of make up a wash, okay? And that's because what I don't want to do is I don't want to flood this, yeah? Because it's got a lot of detail in it, yeah? So if you do it with washes, rather than with uh, just a bog standard paint, what you'll end up with is something far better. So if I hold that up now, yeah, so my first job is I'm going to use this brown, I'm going to give it a complete coat in this brown, and then we're going to go in and we're going to put some darker patches in, okay? Yeah, so back in a second, guys. So there it is after our initial wash of this brown, okay? And you can see how it's sort of falling into the creases and everything, it looks quite nice. Yeah, next job, I want to add some darker patches to it. So what I've done is I've mixed the brown with a, a black to give us a nice dark brown wash. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come along and I'm going to start round about the bottom. Yeah, I'm just going to spread it about a bit. Because it's a wash, it'll soak around. Yeah. And so just dab it on. Spread it about a bit. You can see it's starting to come together. Yeah, there you go. Right, I'll continue putting a bit of a dark wash on here and then once that's done, yeah, I'll put final touches on it, yeah? All right then, back in a second, guys. Right, guys, that's the darker stage on. And then the final one, well, almost final. Yeah, I've got a near black. I've mixed a little bit more black in, so it is almost black, just slightly off into the sort of browns. Yeah, I'm just going to dab in and just, especially around what you call it, where it'd be really damp. Yeah, just around the bottoms. Yeah, get a bit of shading into it. Yeah, especially in there. So all I'm going to do is continue to dab on a bit of black, give us a bit of contrast in there. And then once it's dry, yeah, I've got a little bit of green and we'll come back and we'll dab that on. Oh, phone's dinging. Right guys, so that's all the black done. You can still see it's wet, it's got to dry out. But you can see how I've shaded it up. I've applied the black around the bottom where it'd be most dank and dark. Yeah, and it's, I've left this top sort of much lighter. Okay, the final thing I want to do is, I've got a bit of green here. Yeah. Now, I've not applied this as a wash, because this is already wet. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and just drop it in like that. Okay. It will tone down with the black while it's still wet. And what it'll do is it'll give us that sort of mossy look. Yeah, so I'm just going to come along and literally just little bits of touches, little touches. Yeah, whilst avoiding the rocks as much as possible, eh? <laughs> Thank God we got flocking. Right, I'll do this and then we'll come back when it's all dry and we'll flop both of these up. 
Okay guys, our fences are all dry now. There you go, there's one. Yeah, that was our quick and simple one. Yeah, and then if we go for our more involved stain one, there you go. It's looking good, isn't it? All right. Right, next job is to flock it up. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using my standard sort of hobby flock. Yeah, we've got a, a mid-tone, we've got a highlight, and we've got a shade. Now these are from Jarvis, there's their uh, premium flocks. You can use whatever flock you want. Yeah, now what I'm going to do is basically give the base a, a thin coat of PVA. So I've got all my PVA on there now and it's time to shade it up. Now, uh, I'm going to do this one quite dry. So I'm going to get me highlight first. If I bring this here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do quite some quite strong spots on it with the highlight. Yeah. Yeah, so it's literally like that. Next job is just get our standard mid-tone in. Yeah, tap it off. Yeah, I've got to give it a bit of a blow. Yeah, and then finally, very quickly, I've just got a little bit of flock just on that corner. Right, so let's just clean that off. There we go. There we are. And, if I put that on my hand there, there you go, guys. That's the fence. We'll just add a couple of little clumps and that sort of stuff now. Yeah, I'll do those in a second once this is dry. Yeah, and then it'll be all finished off once it's sealed. Right, I've got to do this one now. I'm going to use exactly the same techniques, but because this is more of a darker rotten one, I'm going to be using this green to give it more of a darker base, okay? So exactly the same principles, but instead of the light dots, I'm going to go for dark dots and my mid-tone. Yeah, and you'll see it once we come to put the clumps on. So... I'll crack on with that, and I'll see you shortly, guys. Right, guys, the flock on them is all dry, and they are looking beautiful. So if I bring this one up, yeah, there you go. Doesn't that look pretty? Yeah, dead easy. Yeah, and then finally for our sort of more detailed bespoke one, our little sty. Yeah, bring that up. You can, should be able to make out the mould and everything on it, and the touches of green. Yeah, I quite like that one. Right. Next job we've got to do is we've just got to add a little bit of terrain garnish to it. So what have I got? Right, I've got some of a bit, bit of like tree foliage off a foreground tree. I've got a couple of squash flowers I made, so I might as well throw one of the some of those on. And then I've got some tufts from Army Painter. Okay, I'll go for the dark ones on our more darker damp bit, and I've got these lighter ones which will go on for these. Now putting them down, putting the clump foliage down, and all that sort of stuff. Dead easy, guys. Yeah. Grab your bit of clump foliage. Like that. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. Yeah. Get a little bit of plate with a bit of PVA on it. Dunk it in the PVA. And bring it in and stick it down. And it is as simple as that. Let's break that bit off because I don't like that bit. There. There we are. And it's as simple as that. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to carry on. I'm going to clump, add some clumps to these, etc. You know what I mean? And just sort of neaten them all up. Okay, and once they're done, I'll bring them back just before we seal them, okay? Right, see you shortly, guys. So there we are. All we've got to do now is wait for those to dry. Then we'll give these a quick seal with watered-down PVA. I'll probably go for a ratio of about one bit of PVA to probably about eight parts water yeah because there's not much to actually seal on this yeah and it's not going to get that much hammer but there is our sort of bespoke one with all that beverly and our wood texture our damp and everything and it's come out beautiful really really beautiful yeah there you go yeah and that's what you can do with you know a little bit of effort as they say now if you want to really sort of knock out a load of fences then as you can see the simple what call it barbecue sticks and barbecue skewers or cocktail sticks and uh, coffee stirrers they come out really nice and of course you can combine the effects you know you can sort of weather the edges and that sort of stuff you can put the damp effects on this one you can even give it a go with the wire brush texturing it up but Really simple, really easy to do, and they're going to look great on the battlefield. Right, guys, once again, I'll get these sealed up, but let's set off for the long shot, eh? So 
So there you have it guys, that's two options for doing sort of field fences. You've got the dead simple one with the barbecue skewers and the cocktail sticks, a simple paint job, looks brilliant. Or you can step it up with the balsa wood or even use your cocktail sticks, but use that weathering technique, chip at the edges, use the staining, get some green in there for some dark mould. A little bit of confolagen at the end and it looks absolutely awesome, absolutely awesome. So. That's it for this video. Obviously this was field fencing. We're going to do other sort of wooden panel fencing and that sort of stuff in future videos, yeah, but we're looking at more greenfield stuff at the Let's Plays at the moment. So, if you've got any questions about it, please fire them into the comments, yeah, if you've got any suggestions, those go in the comments as well. There's always liking and sharing if you know anyone who actually find this video useful. And as always, guys, yeah, if you really do find this useful, if it's been entertaining, if it's helped you with your hobby at all, please consider the patron thing. We're in the middle of a massive fundraiser. We're trying to get this red line slowly higher up. Yeah, because the higher that red line goes up, the more time I have in this studio making tutorials for you guys. It's as simple as that. So if you've liked this, please consider coming on board with Patreon. Yeah, I only ask for a $1 pledge. It's not even a pound, okay? But it all comes together and it all helps. And remember, if you're not into Patreon, there's a PayPal link just down below. If you want to send a one-off, a couple of quid, which is a pound, a couple of pound in UK terms for you, for you people who aren't Brits, yeah, it all helps, guys, yeah? So, it would be awesome. Your money, your support keeps me in this studio, keeps me making videos for you guys. So, it's a rolling thing. So, if you like them, please support them, eh? Yeah, help me with my dream. Let's get that red line up. Right, so that's it. We've got more Let's Makes coming for you. Lots more and lots more videos. So, stay tuned to the channel and I'll see you soon, guys. All the best, yeah? ta -da.